This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. Information at VAChamber.com. Virginia hospitals and health systems provide jobs. They support our economy and promote public health. Local hospitals are always open to help people with unexpected health needs. Having a stable health care network is vital. Virginia hospitals are our lifeline. It's amazing what my students with special needs can accomplish. Their pride is priceless. That's why I teach. Brought to you by the Virginia Education Association. Because a good education is good for everybody. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond, and welcome to Mike Belefsky. Mike, you've been in the studio many times, and some of those was during the 25 years that you worked as a legislative assistant with four different members of the House of Delegates when mm -hmm. you'd be bringing them down to for, for some show they'd be doing either, either This Week in Richmond or some other show mm -hmm. that they would do. And we very much appreciate your driving down to Richmond from Northern Virginia in the in the driving rain mm -hmm. and uh, talking with our with me and with our viewers about the Republican National Convention mm -hmm. and um, this was not the first one that you attended so you jump in and I'll mm -hmm. be asking you some questions but uh, how many how many conventions have you attended well I have attended at nine uh, national conventions and the first one was in 1968. I was going to say, I couldn't count back that quickly. So the 68, where, 68. where was the Republican convention? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows in 68 where the Democratic convention was, right. if they know politics. Right. It was all the riots in Chicago. Yeah, 68 was in Miami Beach. Miami Beach. Florida, yeah. And we had a lot of the demonstrators there in that Miami Beach. I can remember that quite vividly. And also uh, the uh, Republican convention was held in the Miami Beach also in 1972. And at the last uh, night there, uh, we had a, uh, were told not to wear suits uh, to the convention, uh, but dress dress uh, with jeans and so forth because we were being gassed by a lot of the uh, uh, police wow. uh, activity going on there and and they're riding there too. Yeah, well, uh, the the one in Chicago so much overshadowed that that That's quite true. frankly I didn't remember that that was that was happening. In, in Miami, and some of the years, one party's convention is first, and the other years it it, mm -hmm. it flips. This That's year, true. this year you were an alternate at-large delegate mm -hmm. to the convention in Cleveland. We've had Delegate McClellan on the show, mm -hmm. and, and that was on last the previous week. So we're interested in, in getting your perspective on this year's convention from someone who was there on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, any number of us, as I told Delta McClellan, uh, were probably glued to our TVs at least from 7 o'clock on. Not that many of us watched C-SPAN mm -hmm. from gavel to gavel. But uh, th things didn't start just when they, when they gaveled it into order. You, you had early mornings. So uh, you might even kind of take us through a day. What was a, a day like from getting up until finally the end of the day. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, the Democrats today uh, had their convention at the city of Brotherly Love in Philadelphia. And of course, uh, we had our convention in Cleveland. We can call it, consider it a rock and roll uh, convention. Right. <laughs> primarily based upon uh, the rules. Oh, okay. Rules. Yeah, I'm glad you brought those, those along. And, and that was, that kept things fairly 
somewhat contentious, at yes, least, even, even prior to the convention. Mm -hmm. Especially with the Virginia delegation. Uh, and uh, the rules uh, primarily were uh, not changed. A lot of the people wanted the rules changed. They wanted a roll call vote. But uh, we stuck by the rules uh, that were written in Tampa in 2012. Because uh, the previous convention set the rules for the next convention in 2020. So some of the rules were changed on the Republican side. So it depends upon who is on the rules committee in each uh, state. Uh, each, each state had two members of the rules committee and so forth. They voted and most of the rules were in favor of the Trump organization. In, in Philadelphia, a lot of attention was given to the Virginia delegation because of Tim Kaine. Mm -hmm. In Cleveland, a lot of attention was given to the Virginia delegation because of former Attorney General Cuccinelli and others. It, it, it got a lot of TV time early on, particularly relating to the rules. Yes, and under the order of business that we had, it was primarily not changed in pre like, like in previous years. Uh, the first day is primarily going over the rules and approving of all the delegates and the credentials. And the, uh, you got a permanent role on Tuesday, but on Monday you got a temporary role. So usually they're not usually changed or it was not contested contest with delegates. So in, in essence, uh, the uh, Cuccinelli uh, sit, uh, situation in Virginia uh, was not successful. And uh, it was very interesting that on Wednesday, uh, when Senator Cruz had his um, speech, uh, he did not endorse uh, Donald Trump. And that was an interesting evening when, when it reminded me of previous conventions when other speakers got booed too. Mm. Mm. Well, well, go back just for a moment sure. to the uh, Cuccinelli General Cuccinelli, as he was last known here around Capitol Square, mm -hmm. um, is it accurate to say that he really was trying to get things opened up in support of, of Cruz? Was that, that his effort? Not necessarily. He wanted more grassroots uh, support within the Republican National Committee. Ah. And he wanted uh, to open up the rules so that the grassroots people could have more voice, such as a roll call votes of the states. But he was unsuccessful in doing that. Mm -hmm. So the morning began with breakfasts for the different delegations yes. and speakers coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, who came in to, to speak to some of the Virginia delegation? Well, we had, yeah, of course, uh, Ken Cuccinelli. We had Corey Stewart coming in, who was running for governor. We had uh, Ed Gillespie coming in and speaking. He's running for governor next year. Uh, we had uh, a, a pre former presidential candidate coming in to talk, and we also had a, a congressman from Texas talking to us in the morning. What, so it's very uh, helpful. What, if, what about the uh, Republican members in Congress, the congressional delegation? Were, did they come in to some of the breakfasts and speak, or were they just? Yeah, Rob, uh, Congressman Rob Whitman was there uh, campaigning. Uh, he's also running for governor uh, next year. Also, I happened to see Robert Hurt in the parking lot leaving the convention on Thursday, or excuse me, Friday uh, morning, and he was a guest of Fox News because his uh, son w worked for uh, Fox News, ah. which is very interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, now, when we were talking earlier, too, uh, you were telling me about another interesting uh, person that you ran into who's, who's certainly known in Virginia, and many people will clearly remember him and his time of service in the General Assembly in the House of Delegates and then running for statewide office. Uh, yeah, I also ran into uh, a former uh, state delegate, Jay Katzen, who incidentally was uh, ran against uh, Tim Kaine for lieutenant governor and came within one or two points uh, to uh, win that office. So it was ironic to see him as an alternate delegate from Alaska. To from Alaska, Alaska. Yes, yes. He's a park ranger there. Ah, well, it's, it's, it would be interesting to follow up the number of past legislators who've moved to different states, but certainly Jay has stayed very active. That in, is, uh, yes, that's he, correct. He really, really mm -hmm. has. Now, 
the, the gaveling in took place in the afternoon, so it was a matter of, of what was what was the security like, and what was it like um, in Philadelphia? As I look for comparisons and contrasts, mm -hmm. there certainly were demonstrations from Sanders supporters or others. What what was it like as you came into the rock and roll <laughs> conventions? It was very interesting. Uh, the uh, police and also the state patrols and also the other members of the uh, law enforcement establishment were there uh, in force from 50 different states. Uh, they used a bicycle patrol there of 500 police officers to mm -hmm. control the uh, crowds. Um, one man, uh, we were walking outside of the convention hall, wore a mask and was quickly arrested by four or five policemen at the, right in front of me. And so they really took control over the situation and treated a lot of people there uh, with dignity. Uh, we had a, a reception uh, sponsored by Dominion Resources. Um, uh, and there was so many protesters out in front, it was, uh, you couldn't even get a car or a truck through there. Hmm. Very hmm. interesting. As you compare opening night all the way through Thursday, again, thinking about what was happening outside the mm -hmm. convention hall, uh, was there more or less of the demonstrations as, as the week went on? Sometimes they kind of just fizzle out. Other times they get intensified and build up. What, what happened? Well, they always build up. Uh, by Thursday, there was a more of a crowd coming in, and you couldn't walk the streets per se. You had to make sure that you went a different way. But they had barricades all over the streets uh, in Cleveland, and it was very secure, very secure to get in. And uh, we were told to make sure we had our passes, not show our passes, on the street, not carry it with them on our lanyards. Mm -hmm. You talked some about Miami in 1968, and without naming all the ones and the, the seven in between Miami and, and Cleveland, uh, are there any that jump out at you as being somewhat unique, uh, whether it was what was happening inside the convention hall, who was nominated, or even uh, you said there were some security concerns in Miami, mm -hmm. and certainly there were mm -hmm security concerns in, in Cleveland. What about those other seven conventions? Well, the secu security concerns were especially interesting in 1976 when you had a contest between uh, the appointed president, Gerald Ford, and then the governor of uh, California, Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And that was a very contested convention inside the hall. And f tempers flared a lot there during that period of time. It was very, very interesting to see. And it came real close in that contest. I, I have some vague recollection that there even were attempts to change some of the rules at that convention. That, that is that true. Convention. That is true. That is true. And, and some that would have favored the challenger. Well, don't forget, uh, the same situation happened. The Pennsylvania delegation back in 1976 was uncon uncommitted. And so Ronald Reagan chose uh, Richard uh, Schreicher as a vice presidential nominee before the convention trying to get the Pennsylvania delegation to uh, c commit to him, but that didn't work either. Hmm. So like you said, the rules are the rules, and yes. you have to follow them. Now, before we believe the rules, were, were there any significant, from your perspective and the Virginia delegation's mm -hmm. perspective, any significant rules that were changed that will affect four years from now? Uh, and, and what we have read and heard about the convention in Philadelphia. There were some changes in the rules about superdelegates mm -hmm. and I'm not sure whatever else, but what, what about it? So, some minor changes, uh, the amount of states uh, willing to uh, have contest the rules. It was eliminated, if I remember correctly, it was uh, less than two states rather than more than two states. So that was changed and a couple other minor rules. Mm -hmm. was changed. Yes, okay. All right, the, the speeches began Monday night and, mm -hmm. and building up up to Thursday. Uh, take us through some of the early night speeches. And again, you were there on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, those of us who followed on any particular channel following where their cameras led us, mostly to the podium, but sometimes mm -hmm. just to be talking about it, we 
uh, it was kind of hard to figure out who were some of the speakers that were get, that got the most applause, the most uh, in those early nights. Well, uh, the uh, Trump family had a lot of speakers. Mostly, all the uh, Trump family did speak out. You know, in the convention, were very well received. Although uh, Mrs. Trump had uh, sort of plagiarized her speech, that was the big news of the, the Monday event. And then, uh, primarily, uh, Governor Christie of New Jersey, his speech was very well received uh, by the delegates, accusing uh, Clinton about a lot of situations about guilty or not guilty, such like in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Mike Pence uh, was a uh, it was a very good speech on Wednesday. Uh, he um, actually practiced the speech. We went to a, a conservative luncheon on Tuesday, and he. It's very interesting. He gave this almost the same speech he gave on right? Tuesday yeah. to the convention on Wednesday. So it was like a little uh, introduction to see what lines were taken in, in a positive way. And of course, I mentioned uh, Senator Cruz's speech on Wednesday, which was not well received by a lot of the Cruz supporters in Virginia. They were very upset, including uh, uh, Attorney General Cuccinelli. Uh, he, he would not have made that speech, but probably endorsed Donald Trump during that time. So yeah. they were very upset because you had a lot of Cruz support in the Virginia delegation, and a lot of the uh, delegates uh, worked very hard for his election uh, as president and uh, were very upset with that situation. And then, of course, uh, Donald Trump had his speech on Thursday, which was very well received, but a little bit too long, they said. Mm. Yeah. But it was where he seemed. You know, we haven't mentioned some of the other candidates in that uh, large field that finally came down to two and then, then to one. Um, did, I, I'm thinking that Rubio did, did well in Northern Virginia. Yes, he in, did. In the Republican primary. Uh, and so there were people there, I suppose, who their first choice was someone other than Cruz or other than Trump. Mm -hmm. um, but there was no apparent, from the media's perspective, as those of us who had to get it from somewhere, there was no, apparently not any uh, real dissension among those delegates that they uh, pretty much fell in line with the yes. nominee. I mean, we had uh, Tim Hugo was a delegate uh, from Fairfax, uh, who was the uh, state coordinator for uh, uh, Santa Rubio. And he uh, supports uh, Donald Trump now. He was supporting there. We had uh, Delegate Danny Marshall as a delegate down, in, uh, and also uh, Kathy Byron was there in support of Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it certainly was a interesting convention. So bring us on through then to the to the Thursday evening part and. Uh, Give us, a, give us a feel of how that, that went there in the convention hall. Well, it was very interesting. Uh, like I said, uh, Donald Trump's speech was uh, very long. It's over an hour, 20 minutes. Uh, the balloons came down as usual. Uh, you know, that was very spectacular. And uh, the podium was changed, actually. Uh, they, they had a new podium. I don't know if that was picked up in the press. Uh, it was actually uh, Trump colors of gold instead of uh, red, white, and blue, so they put that out differently. Uh, as far as security goes, on Thursday they p had a preventive screen, which was clear plastic, uh, so that no one would come up to the podium at that time mm. also, too, mm. which was very interesting. The first three days it wasn't there. And also I noticed in the Democrat convention they had additional screening on, th on that Thursday night for them also, which was very interesting. I don't think you see that, you know, in the, in the, on television. No, unless it was pointed out, like you say, you, you didn't know, but being there on the floor, you could see it. You, yes, could, yes. you could see what it was like. Uh, we've had other notables in Virginia, whether they were governors or, or gubernatorial candidates or others uh, here from the greater Richmond area. Uh, Governor Gilmore, did you? Uh, does your book have some of them in it, or did did uh, did you see were any of them delegates or alternates? The no, the convention? ones I mentioned were there. That's yes. that's that's it. Right, uh, three delegate uh, members of the House of Delegates, mm -hmm. and there were there were state senators there. Uh, although was, one state senator was uh, supposed to be there, but he couldn't make it. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, and I don't know 
if there's anything, I'm not trying to make something of it, but mm. I just wondered that, that there weren't senators there. As you reflect back on some of the other conventions, can you kind of reflect and, and do, do you think there were more or less members of the General Assembly who came? I mean, they've got their day, full-time day jobs, as mm. you know, and they've got things that they're, that they're doing that they may not have time to go to a national convention. but. Well, primarily, in this uh, the state convention, uh, most of your delegates and alternates were primarily uh, grassroots supporters, and I think that's the main reason why uh, they were selected. To, the grassroots support is very important in Virginia. And uh, to refer to back to Senator Bill Stanley, he says, I wouldn't run for a, a delegate, and I'll let the grassroots people support, mm -hmm. have support. Yeah, well, that, that makes a lot of sense That's correct. on that, and probably a good political move on their part, right, too, rather right. than trying to... And, and there's not the same number, if any, of that are super delegates who get named to the RNC, correct? Right, that is correct. Also, too, back in past history, uh, conventions, you had a favorite son rule, so that a lot of the governors and the senators ran for president to control their delegations. And in uh, this day and age, the favorite son role is not very used very much. Hmm. We gave Delegate McClellan some time toward the end. I want to give you the same to, to make the case to, to the viewers uh, of why they should vote for Donald J. Trump on, on November 8th. And um, what what would be your, your speech on that? You're a, uh, not only a former L.A. To, to for 25 years, but a political consultant, too. So what? what's your message? My message is that Donald Trump and Mike Pence is, are very good for the uh, Commonwealth and also the uh, United States. And I think he can effectively be a, a, uh, a excellent president in working with our economy and also helping people that who are, who are in need get good jobs, and also bring jobs back to the United States. Mike, we need some of those kind of messages on, on TV from both parties and both candidates, <laughs> mm. because this, this election has to be unique in the sense that a significant number of people are voting against someone rather than voting for someone. And, and I have no idea what the polls show today or what they will show going on through September and October and into Election Day, but, but I, I think it's fair to say that it'll be a larger percentage of the voter, voters than typically in a presidential election will vote, vote for either the R or the D candidate because they're voting against against the other one. So it's uh, Well, I agree with that analysis, David, because this is the first time in probably a modern presidential history that you have two major party candidates at over 50 percent unfavorable ratings. Yeah. So uh, that you, it's already there that, uh, and also the people have been in public uh, eye for a very, very long time. Even David, uh, Donald Trump has been uh, in the public eye for the last 30 years. Yeah. Uh, it, it makes the election a, a unique one to, to put it very mildly and, and to say say the least and 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 yet one could uh, whether one favors the D or the R or one is against the D or the R could wonder how, how could this happen that that both candidates would be nominated who had highest negatives I mean there's always been one or the other who had had high negatives, but but not both. Well, both uh, Democrats and Republicans had a contested contest. Yes. Uh, on one that helps it, produce and it. And on it one, there was a, a four-person race with the Democratic side. Two were eliminated very quickly, and then the Bernie Sanders uh, supporters, which by the way you can see more Bernie Sanders bumper stickers throughout uh, Virginia now than Clinton or, or Trump for that, wow, for that matter. That's interesting. And also, uh, you can also see that uh, the Republican side had 17 candidates running, which was uh, a Kentucky Derby field. Yes. So you can see that, 
you can get a minority vote, you know, and still win right. a, the election that way. So Mike, that's why. Mike Bolewski, thank you so much for being on This Week in Richmond. Thank you very thank much, you. David. Thank you. I enjoyed it. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community. For jobs, the economy, and public health, Virginia Hospitals, our lifeline. The Virginia Education Association, because a good education is good for everybody. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.